buy back the land. So the farmers, supposedly their own landowners already, end up becoming peons again of the land they were supposed to have uh, received already. Uh, and that's a basic tenet of social justice. What would you, as an aggressive, do to uh, turn agrarian reform into a real productive program for the aggressive? That's true, actually, that's a very complicated issue. But, uh, ako, I would um, still consult the several sectors on um, how the problems actually arose in the implementation of the uh, Agrarian Reform Program. Uh, to a certain extent, I've known a lot of people who uh, initially they were beneficiaries of the Land Reform Program in our area in Kabankanan. But since the support system from the government uh, was not there, so uh, including the uh, uh, technological, technical assistance was not there. So pagkatapos nila natanggap yung lupa, uh, wala silang pera, wala silang technical know-how, uh, and they are left to their own. So um, after, after a year or so, wala na silang pera, what will they do? So they were forced to sell back the property. You know? uh, and I guess largely for me, ang nakita ko doon is really the support mechanism that should have been there at the first place. Preparing the people, the mentality, the skills, uh, so that they could actually uh, make use of the land that they have and really make it productive. Ang nangyayari kasi doon sa kanil, I, I, I've seen this myself. Uh, uh, pagkatapos nila tagap, tapos uh, sa kanila ng lupa, pero they could not make it productive. Yung 5 hectares, 7 hectares that they have, sabi nila, after all, uh, hindi nila mafe-feel, hindi nila mabubuhay yung pamilya nila doon. Diba? So, um, I guess we really have to go go back to the drawing boards and and find out what support mechanism, what support system we can provide to the people so that when they have the land, and uh, they can also feed their families uh, based on the land that, that they have. But, uh, you know, it's been there um, for years the heart and uh, there's a lot of failures in fact um, in the implementation uh, we may need to to revisit and go back and come up with a better one uh, uh, a better land reform and eventually um, and address that problem I'd like to I'd like to share a story here um, and this is the story of of Chiang Kai Shek of Taiwan uh, I read this in an article in Time magazine just a few months back. Uh, in this article in Time magazine, the story was told that in 1949, when the when the group of of Mao Zedong defeated the Nationalist Army in Chiang Kai Shek, Chiang Kai Shek and his Nationalist Army were forced to retreat to Formosa at the time, Taiwan. So 1949. When they arrived there in Formosa, uh, it was like a barren land, and so an occupied land. And so Chiang Kai-shek was there and thousands of families who joined him, the Nationalist Army. But the first thing that Chiang Kai-shek did, according to this article, was that he subdivided the land, gave every family on the average five hectares. So the five hectares that he gave to every family that joined him there, ang sabi niya, o oh, uh, uh, sakain yung lupa na yan and feed your family based on that land, the five hectares. So what happened was that every day, the members of the families, they would actually uh, cultivate the land and work on the land. So every day, the families would be there until such time that a culture of uh, hard work in industry was developed among the people. And, um, and eventually, yeah, that culture of industry and hard work that, that was developed among the people, kung sino yung naging masipag, eventually, sila yung nag um, improve yung pamumuhay. And eventually, they put up industry, put up uh, uh, businesses. And this became the foundation of the uh, development in in Taiwan. So I, I, I can see the, I can see the, the importance of, of land reform the genuine and appropriate land reform. No? Um, I don't know how we can how we can uh, address that in the country today. Um, 
But I'm looking at the possibility of why don't we make, in fact, this is another law that um, uh, we're looking at. Uh, is this, this idea is not yet perfect, but uh, we are proceeding towards this direction that uh, why don't we make an inventory of the assets that are not performing in the provinces. For instance, no? pag pumunta ka sa probinsya ngayon, sa mga barangays, you will see that there are a lot of vacant, vacant plants. Pero, hindi siya, nakatuwang-uwak lang siya, hindi siya ginagamit, hindi siya cultivate. At the same time, sa mga barangays na yun, maraming mga pamilya na walang ginagawa, nakatumaka din lang. Pero ang daming nakatuwang-uwak na mga lupa. So what ang, ang, ang sabi ko is that, taking off from that experience of Chiang Kai-shek in 1949 in Taiwan, why don't we make an inventory of the vacant lands that we have in the countryside, especially in, in, in every barangay, and see what uh, use we can make of these vacant lands and really allow the people to use them. Maybe not even in the concept of, um, of uh, ownership, but in the concept of reasonable uh, leasing to the people. Uh, and you can bring in now the technology, you can bring, uh, bring in now the microfinance and other support system from the government and the private sector uh, for, for, for the families to be able to use the vacant lands in the areas. Uh, yes, please.